Well, John, this time of the year is always a, a time for hopes and dreams, but do you have any reason to approach this year with more optimism than normal? No, I think all of us trainers have learnt down the years that uh, you, you, can, you can feel good about things, but you know that around the corner is always a banana skin. So from that point of view, you know, we're happy. We've got some nice horses, got a little bit of depth, I hope. Mm. But uh, it's, uh, it's just a matter how things play out. It's like uh, football, pre-season training, you know. Suddenly if somebody does a hamstring, then now my formations change. Things change quite quickly. So we're, but we're happy with them. They're, they're progressing well. What we have run in the, at Doncaster ran very well and at Kempton and uh, in the start of the season. Now we wait for the season. But we'll wait for the Craven meeting onwards. And then, of course, it's hold on to your hats till bonfire night, really. Uh, habitually, you're quite fast out of the blocks relative to, to other new market trainers. Have, have you, can you think of any reason for that? No, I just believe that certain horses, if you can find the right races for them and they suit them early on, then you should go for them. Because sometimes if you keep waiting, they just stack up other people and the races are suddenly twice as tough. That's, that's why. But if they haven't come to hand, no, they have to come to hand themselves. You don't say, I'm going to be ready for Doncaster. I don't do that. If certain horses start playing that way, then yeah, let them. But obviously you're pretty happy with the start that you've made and they, they seem to be in good heart and good health. Did, they, did that warm spell help you bring them on? Well, we never really... The funny thing is we had an extended autumn, not a winter. We just did have that 12 days of minus temperatures. Mm. But it was a wonderful uh, dry cold. And that's the best thing you can get is a dry cold. It's great for killing bugs and everything. A wet cold doesn't do the same. When, it, when the snow was like real powder, and it was great to walk in. I actually canted a few horses and it, it, it just flat. It didn't ball in their feet. It's a rat type of snow. But apart from that, we had a very open winter. We don't get the winters that we used to get. And so from that point of view, your horses, if you like, can be nearly as forward as you want them. And does that help, for example, for you've got a very strong crop of, of classic fillies, it seems, or classic aspiring fillies this aspiring season. Aspiring is yeah, the correct word. Aspiring is the Thank right you. word. But yeah. it, would that particularly help with, <coughs> with those, for example? Yeah, I think it does with the fillies. I mean, actually, a couple of them, the Fugue, for instance, very slow to come in a coach. She's now suddenly really coming. But that's going to be up to them. I, I, you don't have a lot of luck trying. You don't let them get cold and wet, of course. But you don't want to force them. It's like nature. Let nature come in its own time. And I think uh, some of those fillies, she might, for instance, go straight to a Guinea's or a Pretty Polly on the same day, rather than trying to get a trial in. Mm. Let's just talk about that division because it seems to be where you're quite well represented. Elusive Kate's obviously the, the household name if there is one amongst them. How's she done through the winter? She's done great. Uh, she obviously, after she won a maiden at Kempton, she was racing in France, winning the, the list of the Group 3 and then the Marcel Boussac. And she's done very well. She's an out and out miler. She's very strong, very powerful, and uh, would we'll be looking towards Fred Darling, mm -hmm. Guineas, and uh, that route, Coronation Stakes, Royal Ascot. She's, she's that level of filly. But you never thought when she was a two-year-old, I'm going to have to squeeze this lemon because there's not going to be much left next year. No, no. She was always... Uh, and she's out of a lemon drop kid mare. And the family is full of group winners, uh, the, uh, you know, group one winners at three. And so to that extent, she's, <coughs> she's got a you know, good future to her that way. And she's, she's got a pretty phenomenal pedigree as well. And I sense that before the, the last run in the Breeders' Cup, you'd al already almost resigned yourself to the fact that that wasn't really going to happen. It didn't really happen from the point of view she was drawn badly and then got in a little bit of trouble early and it was quite late in the year. Mm. And, uh, and I think sometimes you go there, the Breeders' Cup is late for us and it's quite difficult unless you've taken a nice holiday somewhere mid-season to have them coming right back up where you want them. And sure. I think the race was just too, 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 just too late and, uh, and it didn't go right anyhow from the draw. And the draw is very important. The in, you know, drawn one to six is a big advantage on those two turn miles when you hit the bend in about 120 yards. So in a sense, she could just be the forgotten filly, if you like. Yeah, she could be. Yeah, she could be. And the other fillies uh, that you mentioned, they're maiden winners. You know, they've, they've all actually, all three of them won maidens at Newmarket in good style. Uh, Starscope, Gathering and the Fugue. And, you know, a maiden winner's a maiden winner. You, but they're, they're training nicely and they could be looking at Nell Gwynn's so sort of races. And uh, there's no reason that one of them isn't going to go on at this stage. The others, they might be better mid-season, mm. later in the season. I think the thing we learn down the years, they, they tell you. Mm. You don't start telling them. They they'll let you know when they're right and in a top order. But the fact that you're, you're mentioning them in, in, in this sort of way suggests that they, they've sort of earned their place in, in yeah, your and affection feel, first and foremost. Yeah, and, then, and I think if you, people who own and breed these fillies, it's very important that when there are black type group races around, 
you know, if they can come and get a piece of one of those, it's hugely important. Mm. I mean, I'll be, let's be frank, chasing around the country for a £3,500 handicap is no good to them whatsoever. No. Once they've won their maiden, and if they can get a bit of black type, that is far more important. So just flesh out those unexposed fillies for me, if you will, and, and, and what your well, sort of immediate aspirations. Well, won the, the first division, <coughs> the seventh final maiden at Newmarket at the back end. She did it well. And she's uh, Selkirk filly homebred of uh, Cheveley Parks, and she'll be looking at the Nell Gwyn. And the Fugue won the other division of that, and she wouldn't, she's just to say coming a little later, so she'd be looking far more at going to the Guineas straight, or I trained a mother, she's touched off in the Ribblesdale, or the Pretty Polly right. on that day. So she's, she was just nicely training her for May so the 6th. So she's a slightly more staying yeah, type, possibly. Yeah, and then gathering, she won her maiden well, probably be a mile and a quarter filly in the end. She's had a CB, but uh, I like the way she's got a big raking stride on her. She could have a look at one of the trials because she's, she's just coming to hand naturally. She's, she's only done three sort of nice half three-quarter speeds. They're not fillies that want a lot of work. And I suppose really for any trainer, however big or small, it's those good older horses that, that really sustain you because the classic horses can all fall in a heap and end mm. up letting you down really badly. You need the Nathaniels and the Mars Marvels to to sustain the yard, if you like. Yeah, I mean, they're nice to have horses like that. Uh, I mean, Mars Marvel, he, he, he won his uh, ledger in record time into a headwind. Uh, the ground dried up in Paris. We got tempted in there, you learn. Do you think he might have just had quite a hard race I in the I think what you never realise, he was, he was in good form going to the art. But when they run a race like that, they've sort of gone out of the yeah. ordinary level somewhere else. You, it can leave a little mark and you don't notice it until the last three furlongs of the next race. And I he'd think never run so lesson. fast in his life, would he? No. But he's a, he's a lovely horse and uh, he's in good form. He's looking at running in the Jockey Club Stakes and then maybe a look at a Coronation or Grand Prix de saint Cloud. Uh, but he's, he's, you know, he's got tactical speed mm. for a mile and a half. He doesn't need to just be going up in trip. That was sometimes the ledger horses, you know, like Conduit, they come right back to the mile and a half. And I suppose the good thing is, if they've won a St. Ledger, you know, one, they're tough, and two, they'll keep going. That's, yes, absolutely. And that's half the battle. Yeah. No, he does, and he's, he's in good form. And old Arctic Cosmos, who lost a year, had a year with just two runs in the back end. Um, the first one was at the Cumberland Lodge, which he ran nicely, in, and then he, uh, he got attracted to the Appaloosa ponies uh, at, uh, at Woodbine and became very, very distracted by them. And then he got put in the starting gate all on his own with the filly who won it. So he got quite distracted by her. So he went all the way to Canada just to think about girls and ponies. But he's in good form. He won the other day. And uh, have a look at the John Porter and the Yorkshire Cup. So he's a lovely horse to have. I know he sort of had to win the other day because he was all over them <coughs> class-wise at Kempton. But still, at 10 furlongs, you must have been pleased. A trip yeah, well, 10 well furlongs in a best. tight track. Yeah. It is a tight track, that. It's the inner track, mm. the short running. So it, it wasn't really his track. He's one round on the big track there. But it's a big difference, the inner track to the bend that uh, he handled it well and as regards Nathaniel is it fair to say he is the the star going forward yeah, he's a lovely horse and uh, you know he won the King Edward the world and the King George well and I think uh, he was obviously going for the arc and then we had that extraordinary weather where it was like summer in Paris it was hot and the ground was very quick so we waited for the champion stakes drawn outside mm bit of a problem there. The mile and a quarter, you hit that bend very quick. You have to make use of a horse to get a position. He, he ran a, a, a good race, but he had to be at it for too long mm. in front. Um, and I was delighted with him. He wasn't beaten very far. And he's a horse who, you know, we'll, as I say, we'll look at the Brigadier Gerard and, and the Eclipse. So you do think he's route. tactically versatile enough yeah, to come he back is. to yeah, ten and do well he He's got a very high cruising speed. And we'll go that way with him. And, uh, and then from there, of course, the King George will can follow on. And is it reasonable to expect some improvement? I mean, he, he ought to do better given his pedigree. On his he? pedigree, yeah. I trained a lot of them out of the mare and, uh, you know, there's, there's improvement there and uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, they are, they, they're quite expressive horses. They're, they're lively. Uh, playful act was that way, mm. echoes of eternity, percussionist, all of them. But uh, there's no reason to assume that he wouldn't make a good, solid, normal improvement from three to four. Mm. So a good gr crop of older horses, decent three-year-old fillies. Do you have... Um, Colts that you're really looking forward to seeing in the classic division. Fencing is the obvious one that springs to mind. Well, he's the one who's coming to hand at the moment. Uh, look, he, 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 he won a listed race, which was a restricted one, and uh, he ran very well in the Racing Post Trophy, but he's a little bit fresh and keen, but they were all totally outclassed by Camelot. 
uh, who looked exceptional mm. athlete in so, the paddock and on the day. So you believed Camelot as a, as a fellow trainer watching him in the paddock and looking at the performance, yeah. you totally believed well, it. Well, I thought he was gorgeous as a yearling and uh, he's just come all the way and he's got, he ticks all the boxes. And he, I think he's the outstanding middle distance three-year-old. We all, we all feel that. And, uh, I don't, you know, he might be, if he's only going to be vulnerable, it might, might be at a mile on fast ground. Uh, but, I, you know, I would have thought once he gets, you know, mile with his ground upwards, he's going to be tough to beat. But, this, you know, you've got to go for it. Our fellow could run in the Craven and, uh, or the Greenham, which could be a very hot race uh, with Top Off going mm. there. He's a smart horse. I thought the other very impressive maiden winner of the year. And uh, so I think we've got some good, you know, some really contentious horses. We'll try and take our place with them. I feel in the end, Fancy will be a mile and a quarter horse. His mother was a pre Diane winner. His father was a mile and a quarter horse. So I see if, if I see him running in a, a really big race, uh, it could be the pre de Shockey Club. Mm. Uh, and as regards horses like Camelot, you mentioned, and Top Off, were there any others last year that you had great envy over? No, <laughs> just once that I'm impressed. I love watching good horses, yeah. you know. Um, I don't believe in envy. That eats no. you from the inside. <laughs> Othello. Huh? You've got enough nice ones. <coughs> no, I, no, I just was impressed with those horses. I just, you know, you see a really good one, it gives you a tingle. And uh, they stood out. No, but I, I've got, we've got a horse like Starboard. Uh, look, he only won a red car maiden, but he's a nice type of horse. He's done everything nicely this spring, so I'm pleased with the way he's coming along. He, he, but he'll go to a conditions race at Sandown, so I'm not charging in the deep mm. end, you know. And you. I don't train the two-year-olds too hard. Uh, in fact, I'm always thinking of the next year. So you hope that actually they're, they're going to make a good, solid progress. And, uh, and if they do, a couple of them could be interesting. But you know the game. You all think they're marvellous and they're all working well with your own. Then you go to the races and you finish fifth, beat the four <laughs> lengths. You realise they're not good enough. And we, we've all been there before.